All right, welcome back, Vulcan Deckmasters. We did take a very short break between the match between Strife Crow, Kibler, and Trump versus Orange. We're going to move on to the match very soon. Now, the both players are ready. Trump brought Warlock, Warrior, and Hunter. His Warrior is banned. Orange brought Druid, Hunter, Warrior, and his Druid was banned. So both players are playing a Hunter, and Trump has Warlock, where Orange has a Warrior. Yep, Trump sitting at 1-1 right now. Dude's been in the esports game for a long time, and I got to say the Harudra uh, pickup against him on Monday, I think it was, was a bit of a surprise for me. You know, Trump's been a cool customer. Uh, it's been playing pretty decently lately, and, uh, you know, Harudra coming in out of nowhere. But, hey, that's what it is when you got these play-in situations. you got your invited guys, and you've got some real possible spoilers. One, Surrender, that I'll, we'll get to talk about a little bit on Monday because uh, he doesn't have any games today, and I desperately want to talk about Surrender. But... Yeah, so Trump, uh, pretty good shape uh, so far. He picked one back up, 0-1 right now for Orange. We'll see what he can do. So Trump versus Orange, I don't think I've ever seen those two players face off against each other. If I recall in the Kingwin Pro League, they weren't in the same group. Um, so I don't know if they've ever played against one another. I just know that Trump, like I have to give it to him over the past... A uh, few months has really stepped up his constructed game. Like, he used to be considered an arena player primarily, but his constructed play has just improved drastically. And he gets invites to tournaments now, and he actually competes with a lot of the people out there. So it's not just a fluke. And he's been doing so well. Um, it's surprising to see him just step it up completely. He, he hits for High Legend every season consistently with metagame decks. It's very good at tweaking. Uh, archetypes. I, he favors a control playstyle a lot. Um, that's still one of the predictabilities of Trump. So you will expect him to play Paladin, Warlock, Warrior in his lineup, at least two of those three very often. Yeah, and, and not to take anything at all, I got to say, away from Orange for playing for Team Archon. Uh, the guy ground his way into this one, I believe. He played in from the open, uh, the open qualifier uh, to get his way here. I mean, obviously, sitting at 0-1 right now, uh, you know, hopefully he's shaking off those nerves, but uh, he was number one. I want to say at Seat Story Cup uh, a while back and one of the ESL things. Um, yeah, I mean, Orange I beat uh, his ca his team captain in, uh, I believe it was an SSC. He actually beat Amaz in the finals. So, I mean, that was, that, that after that he got picked up, which funny enough, he wasn't in line for any team. And then he won that tournament, got picked up and then won ESL, uh, the Legendary Series. A little, uh, a little later, and I think he participated in Pinnacle, but didn't do that amazing, um, if I recall. Anyway, it was just a crazy thing. Orange is like his playstyle, which is funny because in King Win Pro League he was very inconsistent. You know, from week to week you'd see him play, and you'd wonder if it was the same guy. Um, but when he plays well and he's in the zone, it's really noticeable. You can just see that his plays are nearly flawless. Absolutely, and. I <sighs> I got to say, I just one of those things, man. I respect the grinders. I respect the guys that are going to work their way in. Uh, you know, he'll get to that point where he's getting the invites uh, for sure. But you also got to respect that there is an open an open bracket running. There have been a lot of invitationals uh, lately, and I, you know, it's just nice to see opening it up because you know, there's you know, there's some secret killers out there hanging out in ranked play that that uh, if they make their way into a tournament, uh, they might be a spoiler in a big way. Yeah, the uh, the amount of uh, players that are getting picked up by teams is actually pretty high right now, which is interesting because you look at it and it l like you have to assume there's a lot of uh, unknown, amazing players out there, but a lot of them are getting picked up. Uh, yeah. You know, Orange is a good example of that where he went from not really being that well known outside of a specific subset of the grinder population to Xixo, right, getting picked by uh, Team Archon as well. All of these players really often qualify multiple times to various events, but they don't make a big splash until somebody, you know, whispers about them to team captains sometimes who notice the effort and the consistency of those players. Uh, they're part of a practice group very often. They'll make their way into teams and this will happen more and more as time passes. Yeah, and that's one of those things with the, I mean, a large open open uh, format sort of tournaments. You can really run into some big names early on, or you can just run into a series of bad draws. I mean, we're talking about cards here. Some of the best poker players in the world go out early rounds in major tournaments just because, you know, it wasn't, you have a bad day, and that's the end of a tournament for you. But uh, we'll see here as we get into game one, Trump versus Orange. 
All right, so Trump versus Orange. Orange playing a Hunter deck. It seems to me like this is going to be a face Hunter. Wolf Rider, well, I wouldn't say it's a dead giveaway because it has been played in some variants. Uh, the hybrid Hunters, right? There's two broad archetypes. You've got the face Hunter, which just, you know, goes face. And Midrange, who plays Savannah High Mains in a bit of a slower style. But the hybrid Hunter is a bit of an in-between where you cut some of the slower cards. Uh, you play the High Mains, but you cut, you cut some other slower cards just to put in more face damage. Um, to speed up the play against other mid-range hunters. It's like, uh, yeah, we got a bug over on Trump's side. It's it's in the works, guys. I've been on the phone with Blizzard personally. Let's just, like, I wonder if Trump is playing Handlock, though. It's a deck that he's played a ton of, and I, I have to assume... Well, there it is. I, I have to assume Paratrile, it is. Twilight, Twilight Drake's at Thor It could be Dragonlock. It could be Dragon Warlock. Have you, have you had much experience with that deck? I've started to see it a little bit more, and I like it. I'll tell you that. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Twilight Drake's, uh, the Azure Drake's. I like the utility. Um, but no, not as much as I should have, I'll say. Uh, well, I have to assume now it's not Malilock. Malagos Warlock does not put Ancient Watchers in its lineup unless Trump decided to bring <sighs> a Trump special is, brew of that. He's rolling, deck. he's teaching us he's going to put on a clinic today and how Ancient Watcher changes the, changes the whole metagame. The Ancient Watcher is one of those cards. Like, I love the card just because conceptually you look at it and it looks like complete nut complete nothing when yeah. you're a new player and you're like what is that garbage and then then somebody taunts it up you're like aha uh -huh. and then he shadow flames it and then suddenly everything starts to make sense for newer players those cards are really awesome um and it's fun that they're actually a part of a like one of the best archetypes handlock it's been around since the very release of the game i think yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things that really starts to to teach you those fundamentals of card interactions and how you should be thinking about those things. Where you know, and I, I forget who it was that was talking about this uh, uh, just a little while ago. It's one of those things that uh, it uncovers itself in in layers where things that don't necessarily. I think it was Dustin Browder uh, maybe was given an ben interview. Brode, maybe it was I think. Ben Brode was given an interview. Ben Brode, where he was yeah. talking about how those things that uh, that don't look good at first, you know, they're 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 crap, like Wisp, say, you know, but then <laughs> hobgoblin people, value. People will find a reason to pull the wisp out. Yeah. All right, well, Orange with a really sickening board. Trump cannot AoE it down because the Creepers will just come back and the 1-1s one will just lose the Divine Shield, which is not a big deal. So he's going to have to try to stop the bleeding, but Orange can press on. He's got the Owl to kill that Drake. So not a huge amount of tempo for Trump off that uh, Twilight Drake. Yeah, definitely Orange here going uh, big and quick. And looks like he's going to drop the silence on that Twilight Drake and bring it right back on down to size. Leaving uh, Trump a little bit of work to do and just going to pop one of the Holy Shields. Oh! So what does he Arch need here? Squires are, are rough. Yeah, I don't know. He needs he needs something. I mean, it's, it's, it's low health cost on the board, but it's really going to start stacking up here if he doesn't get rid of it real quick. It's funny because uh, Just Sane is playing a Miracle, uh, not a Miracle Rogue, a Rogue List, Tinker, Sharp Sword, Oil Rogue with Scarlet Crusaders, which attests, I guess, to a lot of the pros' opinions about the value of Divine Shield at the moment. They're really tough to remove. Like, I mean, they make Warrior's Life really hard. It does. I mean, it forces that absolutely worthless trade. He's going to get a Glaive Zooka to throw on top of it. Oh, and that's Trump, the game. That is, wait, yeah, he can't miss Lethal. <laughs> Okay, he's I thought he was going to miss it. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of hovered for a second there, but uh, looks like he's just going to roll it on down. And uh, Trump, <laughs> uh, Trump with the grimmest, the grimmest head shake combo uh, as it gets wrapped up in turn five there. The grim Trump run, new deck. Yeah. There we go. So it seems like Orange is going to be taking the first game. That was absolutely quick, as you sometimes have to expect. Uh, in order for Handlock to win this matchup, you have to find the Moltens, you have to find the Taunters, and you have to find the Healbots and the Farseers, none of which Trump had at the moment, which, I mean, what you can what can you do? Like it's, yeah, it's a rough sit. I mean, you just it's it's a hell weight, man. You're just sitting there stewing in it, and you're just like, come on, next, next card, nothing. Great, okay, I'll just watch my health dwindle over the course of two, three turns. Uh, yeah. And then we'll say GG, and then I'll play a real game next time, hopefully, and, uh, you know, get the cards I need. So Orange is going to be playing Warrior, probably Green Patron Warrior, against Handlock, which is notably, like, it's known for its ability to counter Patron very effectively. So Trump, if he plays his cards well, uh, and if Orange doesn't get a massive Frothing Berserker, could get the win. It's very, very strong, and I think Trump knows it, and that's probably the reason he brought it and did not ban Orange's Warrior. 
Got a couple of a couple of giants in the deck, which I always love to see. I'm just a big fan of the the giants, the mechanics uh, that go into those cards. Uh, they just they make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. There goes a patron for Orange. She's gonna armor up and send it on back over to Trump. All right, so Trump life tapping his way to a hopeful giant or Drake in the next few turns. Otherwise, it's gonna be a very slow start for him. And even though it's a favored matchup, you still want to put down something. Picks up the whirlwind, yeah, and it's just <laughs> nobody well, wants to play anything. Nobody wants to be the first one onto the board there. Trump gonna be uh, grabbing up his Draxus anti keel bot and uh, thinking about what to do. Is his hand is getting pretty full there? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, he's got. He, if he taps, he's gonna be on ten, and he's gonna have to coin his Sunfury protector. So he's thinking whether or not it's worth it just to improve the hand quality. Because very often, handlock players can afford to tap and throw away the coin just to improve the quality of what they've got in their hand. Because um, if you don't find those big tempo swing cards in the mid game, very often it's just a. It can be very difficult because you can't guarantee them. So life tapping so is very, very important for Trump. Yeah. Although he has a lot of healing, it's, he could take his time, I guess, and tank yeah. some damage. Absolutely, and I mean, Orange got a lot of, uh, he's, he's got some good setup to deal with, uh, you know, any sort of light work boards that Trump might throw out here uh, in the next couple of turns, but uh, execute we'll see what he ends up doing. Way, no. for, for Warriors, Execute is really crucial, and what's really interesting, at least for Trump, is that at least Orange's game plan doesn't involve rushing the board on turn four. Like, even if he doesn't tap and he just passes, it's all right. Tapped? I wonder if he disconnected. Just did nothing. I mean, is now he's. I mean, he's still reacting as though he's in the game. Uh, but yeah, that was just a null turn there. He did absolutely nothing. Back over to Orange, who's uh, going to start with, punching uh, face. Bite and yeah, I mean, I mean four armor sitting there. Morrison. So he's you know he's plenty beefy to get the work done. And uh, I mean, weird there. It didn't like a, a no turn. Going to fill the hand up there with a zombie chow. Probably uh, not the happiest card in the world uh, to see, but uh, you know he, he he skips the tap, so he's going to hold on to a little extra life, I guess. Silver lining there for uh, Trump just sitting through it. I don't know, maybe he's joined multiple games and but he was playing the, a different game on the other. The interesting thing is that mo most of the like the most important cards in Trump's deck to handle a Grim Patron Warrior they involve you know Hellfire, you know Twilight Drake to counter some of the early game, force the executes with the giants. This is a very slow start for a handlock, even against a favored matchup, because all it takes is one amazing turn for the... Like, if, if Orange here has the read that his opponent has nothing, which he can't possibly have that read, he's got to be afraid of Hellfire, he could play Patron in a rage and just, you know, try to trigger some more Patron on the following oh, turn. No. It's an all-in play. If he knew what Trump blanked on, Orange could be greedy. Um, but being that, you know, obviously he doesn't have that read, he's going to have to take it very slowly. Yeah, I mean that's a hard one. It's a hard one to make a call on. You know, he just sends a a nothing turn your way. You just got to be looking at that like. Hmm. He has to have hmm. Hellfire at the very least. He's got no Drakes, no Mountain Giants. He at least has Hellfire. So if gonna I throw patrons, they're gonna be dying. But be dying. Drop loot hoarder armor up and send it back over, and we'll see what Trump does. He gets an Iron Beak Owl, which will do nothing. Uh, so that's do, great. Yeah, for right now. <laughs> Look pretty in the deck, and uh, you can go hoo hoo in your brain, which is always fun. Who's gonna orange? Heal just, it up. If you if you're heal botting for four health here, and you're a handlock player, you are sitting on some really weird hand. Is what orange is thinking? I yeah, like what what what's your read off of anti heal bot for four when there's not a lot of threat out from orange? I mean, it's almost preemptive. And, you know, Orange is going to be able to get himself that Emperor Thorson if he wants it. Alternatively, he could play Gnomish. It's all about whether or not he wants to wait for the War Song Commander or the Frothing Berserkers to get that Emperor. Because the best win condition you get against a handlock is a big Frothing Berserker. Because patrons can be handled, right? They don't hit the face for too much. A massive Frothing, like right now, uh, that he can get with Inner Rage, Whirlwind, Whirlwind, that is enough to kill a handlock player in one turn. Sludge Belcher for Trump. He can throw that out there and buy a little more time unless he's finally decided on a course of action here. Looks so like he's going to... Nope, not going to send the heel bot over. I gotta, I'm gotta. i wondering what's going through Trump's mind now. I've never in my life wondered more. Normally he's got he's just such readable expressions on Trump that Did I can... Did you play uh, Sylvanas, I think, to force the pop at least of the... Uh, what's the name of it? The Dead's Bite? Yeah. 
I don't even dislike that. I mean, when do you play Sylvanas otherwise against a Patron Warrior? Pretty much never. Um, they're, well, like, you could play Belcher, but it's not defensive. Next turn, there can't be a Warsong Commander Grim Patron, so Belcher could be played now to prevent the slime from popping it. Sylvanas is otherwise very unlikely to get you any value in a matchup like this. Like, there's very few times where you're going to be able to use her, unless you wait for Shadow Flame, where you're very often, anyway, not stealing a minion. Trump really just stuck for his options here. He's going to end up dropping Sylvanas. We'll see how that plays out here as it's going to go over to orange. He's going to tick that armor back down to one, go to face with the with the heel bot. And loot hoarder friends abound as uh, orange pulls another. I would be happy, I think, to trade away my two minions into Sylvanas and then uh, kill it with the weapon and then drop Emperor Thorson. I mean, double whirlwind, one frothing. Um, that means if you find Warsong Commander with the other frothing, you still get the full sequence. And that on its yeah. own is compelling enough. Yeah, I mean, if, if Thor Sand comes down here, I mean, he's just getting excellent value for it. And the way Trump's been playing that, I mean, it, it's one of those situations where if you're orange, maybe what you're thinking here is, I really don't want to overplay if I'm playing into something that's ruining my whole my whole deck. So, I mean, good on him to hold on to, to it till now, but I, I'm with you there. I think the Thor Sand's going to be good value. Uh, he's going to get the Loot Hoarder out, and uh, looks like... Uh, the card draw, though. He wants to cycle it as much yeah. as possible, but... Yeah, he's, I mean, he's just... I think he's he's just wanting more information from Trump, and Trump has uh, really got nothing to give him. So Orange here is going to give either the Armor Smith or the Gnomish Inventor to his opponent. Uh, Orange, yeah, giving it to Trump. That the or, this Loot Hoarder is not going anywhere. And the Loot Hoarder... Oh, he's going to get dies. Damage. What does he find? Another armor. Pulls smith. armor smith. So still sitting in a comfortable position if you're orange. Trump uh, gonna pull mortal coil. Not a bad card to find in this position because you can always just kill that armor smith right up and then play an anti heal bot. The the fun thing is that you would think that healing matters a lot against patron, but a well played patron can always just burst you down with frothings. The strength of handlock is the fact that they taunt up way more than patrons can handle, and I think. Now that the Drake is out and there's two Giants left, this is where the Handlock will start to pick up speed. Absolutely. And Trump, I mean, given the time here, uh, like you mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's really on Orange here to make that call that he's going to really have to slow roll this entire hand. Uh, Orange, I mean, couldn't pull the trigger on it, and, and who could blame him? Uh, but now uh, maybe Trump going to get things rolling. We'll see. He's going to get that uh, full-size Twilight Drake. Not going to get the fun size. Acolyte fun si pain, fun size Twilight Drake. You remember the old yeah. one one Twilight Drake? Were you playing back then? Because that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was. I was like, oh, I top deck Twilight Drake. I have no hand. That's great. Let's play four <laughs> mana for a wisp. That sounds very good. <laughs> God, I love those moments. Uh, and Orange is not happy. No execute in sight. But he could start drawing next turn with the Acolyte of Pain. I mean, I don't think you develop it just yet, do you? Uh, it looks like he's going to drop Armor Smith and then take a powder. I like this play. Um, the only thing it's weak to is like a defense of Argus, and if it is, then you can always execute the Drake. The good thing is that if the Drake kills the Armor Smith, then it's on five health, so your Death Bite can take it out. Doctor Boom, a comfy little pickup there for Trump, and uh, five armor sitting on orange. So yeah, just keep it keep it smooth, you know, like uh, like Molson Ice. Hmm. I mean, that was special for you. That's special for the Canadians. Yeah, I don't know. I don't drink beer. I I, I should I should probably I, maybe I should know more about beer. I should get more information about it. Nah, you know? no, that's when a waste. When you got of time. a U.S. guy knowing more about your Canadian beer, there's something wrong with yeah, you. Yeah, and I don't even drink at all. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like I have no clue what you're talking about, man. Scotch whiskey hit me. All right, so Doctor Boom here falling down. I think if Trump, like Trump, has no execute, so right now this is a bit of an annoyance for him. Double Acolyte. That is quite a play. Brother Does he play Acolyte? Double Acolyte? Yes. I have to assume he does. This is too good not to, because you're likely to find at least an execute from those two acolytes. The boom bots hitting them. You can then kill Doctor Boom. Set up a nem, like a, an absolutely sick Emperor Thorson. Orange is gonna be in an amazing spot after this if he doesn't overdraw, of course. Picks up Gromash. And down goes the acolyte. Still doesn't find an execute. Oh man, no <laughs> execute for There's Orange. There's the grim patron. <laughs> Oh, He's wow. He's got both Grim Patrons pulled now, and uh, <laughs> Orange is not getting the pulls that he wants. You know, I think... Uh, uh, need to get some get some out of there. Orange has to find at least the next... He's trying one more card. Will it be good? Oh, he's or picked up something command. decent at least, though. He's got to sacrifice that 
If he sacrifices inner rage, does he still get a kill with the free whirlwinds if he's get an getting another frothing? I would have to assume so. Because if he plays Emperor Thorsten, those whirlwinds go down to zero. So that's going to allow him to get yeah. a really nice few turns. Yeah, those have been sitting in there for, for a bit. And that's what I was looking at thinking, man, it'd be a good time to drop him. And he's held on to it. And yeah, he's going to do even better now. I mean, you got Gromash in the hand. Uh, both your patrons out, so I mean it's going to really, really give him good value once he can find a spot to get it down. Trump here just going to go to face with Doctor Boom before he makes any commitments. He's got his dark bomb in there uh, any old time he wants to use it, and it's finally Slud Gibelcher's time to shine. And he taps shine. again. Oh wow, that is that is pretty much useless unless Fiery War Axe comes out at this point. He dark bombs the face because you know I've got ten cards again. Trump, this game just getting filled up with cars he just has no use for, and it's there's execute. the execute. Little nod guess, out of orange, little subtle one. You know what? Orange here, pretty happy to find the execute because that's exactly the turn he wants to play Emperor Thorson on with a completely full hand. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw all that down into super affordable range uh, for the future. You know what, though? There's an argument to be made for not doing this because you might want to go through the Belcher with your Frothing Berserker. <laughs> He thought there for a split second, do I want to keep this to go through a taunt? Or do I yeah, want to really? keep this to stay alive? He's going to get Sun Fury Protector. Yeah, Trump is possibly just going to hide behind this wall of minions eventually. Posed up beautifully. We'll see what he runs. But yeah, I mean, it's it's been a, he's been sitting in high life for a while, which means his giants are going to have to hang out for a bit. Going to go ahead and send Siphon Soul over. Good heals, man. It's keeping Trump in this, and and the time has been friendly to him. Uh, like Orange's early game, just you know, being mystified by what exactly Trump's got going on over there has really bought Trump a lot of time to put together a nice looking hand. To say nothing of uh, Orange's, who's got uh, he's in a pretty solid situation himself. Orange has a really good hand. The problem is going through to kill the enemy is the issue. Is how exactly do you go and do this? Like if you play all your grim patrons here. Your opponent has tapped about 25,000 times, so if you do that, you're going to have to hope that everything lines up. So a patron play with a frothing play is probably the best way for him to max out the amount of damage the frothing can do. It's like, like the only real way for, to do that for him at the moment. Yeah, Fire War Axe helping a lot. Down. And luckily, every single time it seems, if you're in a, if you're in a game on, on ladder, that Fiery War Axe is going to come right after the Acidic Swamp piece comes out. But it's a really good board here. Like, I mean, Orange can double Whirlwind to clear these two minions and then spawn as many patrons as he wants. Essentially, that slime is just forfeit. Goodbye, slime. How much okay. damage is that gonna be? You know, I can't do math. And I, I don't think Orange is calculating. I think he's just going with it. Oh, yeah, um, that's... Okay, so he's, it's gonna be 12, 15... He's got a, a rope. million oh, damage man. I landed on there after throwing it into my tip calculator. Orange is, is probably panicking with a rope here. I, I'm panicking and I'm not even playing this. I am not even I'm not even playing this and oh. the rope is gonna hit for orange. No. The sludge belt has he already queued up his actions? I don't think so. He's at least oh. got to attack with he, No, look at his face, he didn't get he it. He had lethal, but now he can't get it. He didn't Hell get it. Hellfire's in the hand. He had lethal Trump is laughing, orange is in full despair. So either Trump concedes to be a good guy or he says, you know what, those rules, they kind of favor me and I'm just going to taunt up my Molten Giant. I don't think the look on Trump's face said I'm conceding. Yeah. <laughs> he is That's not. That's definitely a double giant oh. protector turn and Orange missing lethal. Not, not you know, because he did, oh. just kind of He's because He's going to attach a very long boot to his leg and walk around kicking himself <laughs> for a while after that. Mountain oh. Giant comes out, Molten Giant going to follow it. You know and what I realized? There's the Sun now? Fury Protector to ruin Orange's day. I have a golden Nazdormu. It's been waiting for this moment for <laughs> quite a while now. <laughs> that's the new. That's the meta, man. <laughs> and he's gonna kind of see. <laughs> Trump wins it Orange. with the rope. Oh man, down goes Van Rookie here. Oh man, Orange is doing. Uh, I mean, he. he <laughs> The grinder you know done many, in. Do you know how many games were lost on the back? And the worst part is he didn't wait that long to pull off the no, play, right? He, really he thought didn't. a little bit and then he had he a lot did it. to do. I mean, it, it's. Oh, I, let's blame the patron for that one. Slow patrons. Yeah. 
Cost and the Belcher the doesn't help either. I mean, the Belcher takes no. forever to spawn the slime, so the patron also just joins in. They all get uh. in here to slow down the rope. Um, and, you know, a lot of people do complain about that. In tournaments, it's happened quite often. Um, They'll start the forum life coach. posts. Yeah. Life coach has lost, I think, more games than anyone on the rope. Um, and there's been an incident. I forget who the player was who was playing against. What's his name? Lothar. Um, the player just raged straight up, like punched the keyboard or something through the so mouth. Not, I mean, what do you, that's yeah. I, I we were talking. I was talking about not really going on tilt. That would do it, though. That yeah. situation right there would put. It wouldn't be anything a player did. It would be that rope and the lag on the on the. Oh, on the patrons and the slime. So should we call on animations not counting towards the end of the turn? Because they yeah. did lower the, the rope time in beta from like 90 seconds to 70. So yeah. is it time that we stop counting animations for real? Because I mean, the it's space is crazy. That's, I mean, yeah, that was a game for Orange right there. I mean, you can chalk that up to one win for Blizzard, really. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, that, that game was done. That game was all the way over. And Orange had nothing to do but sit there and watch animations play. And one of them's a taunt, so it's not like he can, you know, queue up going to face. He has exactly. to queue up killing the taunt first. Yeah, he's not going to let you just drag the minions preemptively. Usually you can, right? But now the Belcher's waiting. And I think maybe the, the best way to do it would be to have all the animations happen simultaneously instead of queue them yeah. up. When that's that's always been like my this. thought is it feels a little weird and it, honestly when you're sitting in a situation like a patron situation you're just like okay okay come on let's just Going get the buddy out on the field um i think for that reason you have to practice your apm you know you play yeah. those decks all right i mean that's rough orange gonna stick with it hopefully he doesn't end up on tilt and you know what i gotta say too i you know there's gonna be that discussion uh, on Reddit anywhere about whether Trump should have done the, 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 you know, the quote unquote right thing and concede there. No way, man. That's not, it's not on him. That it's that been done before, but not by Trump. Trump is a, a player who will play by the rules, but as soon as they go his way, I mean, he's, uh, he's going to yeah. take it off. And, and Hey, that's, that's competitive play, man. Like that's well within his rights there to, exactly. to hold on to that one. It's, you know, orange, if he'd moved a little, if he'd thought how killer is that? If he'd thought, a second and a half less, you got the game locked down, and and you put the two zero on the board. Oh. All right, so Orange's Warrior this time versus Trump's Hunter. So we're going to be seeing the uh, an interesting matchup here. I, I'd say usually against mid range Hunter, Patron Warrior will win most of the time, but not by a huge margin. Um, so mid range Hunter can steal it. I mean, it's very possible that he can do it against Patron. It's about like maybe like thirty five, sixty five. Perhaps, I think, for the, the Hunter. It's a class that can take wins very easily, but that starts with the Armorsmith. Pretty tough for Trump. Spinner on the board. Going to throw that one into the Armorsmith. Lotheb sitting in the hand for Trump is his draw. And uh, Trump taking his time again. He's not been in a rush. <laughs> Unlike let his opponent, turn. He's, been, he's been perfectly comfortable waiting. He's let a turn just roll on through there. Queen the last game. So Trump's new nickname is Life Coach Junior. <laughs> There's the two players who take the most time, you know? Like, I've actually thought to myself, yep. if Life Coach and Trump have a showdown, whoever brings in the door move takes the series. You can <laughs> sprinkle it in every single of their, of I their decks. I want to legitimately, because, I mean, what an... I, I just want to see Nosdormu come out because what a what a crazy <laughs> limitation to implement. I mean, because there are some crazy fast players out there. Uh, Death Star V3 is yeah. pretty good. Star V3 is crazy fast. Dog yeah. is really quick as well. Like, yeah, dog. I mean, so you get some guys that play really, really quickly. Like, they've got the whole thing planned out. They're, you know, whatever it is about their play style just makes them quick. I mean, you throw Nosdormu in there, you run up against. <laughs> somebody like Trump or Life Coach. And, uh, you're well, Life Coach had through. to face one of them. Uh, I remember from Sneed's old Shredder, Nosdormu came out. Life Coach misplayed for three turns straight and then decided to just misplay to kill it as fast as possible. That was yeah. the most hilarious mm -hmm. thing. I mean, uh, that's 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 mind game. Like, forget <laughs> metagame. That is straight into your brain. That's like, you better learn to think real fast because, uh, you know, that's what you got. Gotta get a couple of juggles here. And bonk. Both They're pretty the good, up. actually. Those are yeah. pretty good juggles. Loot hoarder out for orange, and in a rage. Man, mm -hmm. that was. I'm still. I'm still. <laughs> feel so bad for orange. I, I didn't even oh. notice. Trump picked up the beast, like the beast. Oh yeah, not a beast. The very one. Yeah. The, the very beast. Yeah. 
Frothing Berserker on the field, and then a rage gonna come out. So this is saying to Trump, if you don't have Eagle Horn Bow or Iron Beak Owl, you're about to take some serious damage. Never mind, Quick Shot was picked up. You know, that's the other card I didn't think about. That yeah, Quick Shot in the hand. <laughs> Seeing that a little bit more regularly in the Hunter decks here, in the, in, in this tournament, at least. I think just about everybody's been running it. Yeah. What I like is Blizzard's decision to give that to Hunter because it really gives, um, you know, like it really fits into the Hunter archetype where you already see that half your player base is playing Face Hunter. You can give them an extra tool to really, you know, put misery over everyone else in the ladder. Just send one of his little spider friends in and get himself out of trouble. Back over to Orange, who's going to pull his first patron. I think. Uh, how much do you like Dread Corsair over Loot Hoarder Cruel Task? Actually, do you play Cruel Task? I assume you have to kill it 1-1, one, one, otherwise it trades up until you're Hoarder. Alright, makes yep, a lot of sense. Looks like it's gonna, yeah. It's gonna just stop that from being a problem. Mad Scientist number two out for Trump as... Orange makes a hard call. Not so hard I'm call. curious to see what Orange's traps are because recently Freezing, Explosive, and Snake have been played in just about all sorts of variants of Hunter. And that's really been interesting. Orange hasn't picked up the weapon yet, so dealing with this Lothab is going to be a bit tricky for him. He's going to get his Battle Rage. Obviously, going to be well too expensive there. And just going to go right into face. Check that trap. It's Explosive Trap. So Doesn't he wish he'd played the Patron on this one? <laughs> Frothing Berserker going to be the pull, and he will not get any free Patrons. It's a sad yeah. day. It's a sad day when you don't get him for free like that. Hovers over the Corsair. Yeah, it looks like he's going to send that bad boy out to uh, hang out with Lotheb on the field and send it back over to Trump. Is, it, is Trump going to play the beast here? You have to assume he is, right? At 9 damage a pop. What's the risk? Execute? Yeah, I guess, but I, yeah, I mean... How, is that a really big risk when you consider the potential upsides? Like, do you have to delay it one turn to make sure you've got what it takes to deal with a 3-3 in case it dies? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it acts as like a really nice, well-timed spoiler. I mean, he's not going to end up throwing it out. He's going to mad scientist, piloted shredder, whirlwind for orange on the other side. But, I mean, what a great early game. Huge pressure. Uh, not early game, but, you know, slide into the mid-game. Sort of yeah. huge pressure he could have thrown on. Um, but, yeah, hey. When oh, you take the beast, you gotta, you got to unleash the beast. Am I right? I mean, that just it feels right. And he pulled execute, so, hey, <laughs> Trump doesn't know it, but he made the right call there. And seeing execute's going to let him know. Hey, I did make the right call. And not only did you make the right call, but now you can play the beast and really put your opponent out of his misery very soon. Okay, you know what? There might be an argument for the high main set. It's low risk. It has pretty much, you know, the same effect. It's unremovable, and orange is going to be very hard-pressed to handle this board. Acolyte of Pain going to be the draw. As mm. orange thinks, uh, hopefully real hard about what he's going to have to do here, because, I mean, you got 12 on board now. Every single one of them with a nice death rattle. That uh, How fine do you think Frothing Acolyte Whirlwind is? It's very slow. It draws you a card, buffs up the, Ac the Frothing Berserker to force the opponent to trade with it. And then next turn you can go Warsong Commander Patron and start uh, getting some value, hopefully. It's just really yeah. tricky. Sounds like a solid play. I mean, again, and he's still got the beast sitting in his hand. So, so Trump, I mean, it's, it's definitely going to buy him some time. It's going to get some of these uh, high damage boys off the board. Oh, man. He's doing it. Acolyte, Whirlwind with Warsong. Draw two cards, kill the Mad Scientist. Possibly find an Execute for the next turn. Or not. And he's into rope again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that rope. Alright, he's gonna go for the Frothing Acolyte. And down they go. These guys will have to do a bit of work, because right now... I see that rope when it's Wait, is that, is that... I immediately started sweating. Animal oh, Companion out. He's going to get Misha. What if Orange plays Brawl in that patron deck? Oh, like, man. just somehow it's in there. Like, it makes no yeah, sense yeah. in their patron deck. Somehow. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe that's new meta, though. Maybe maybe he's uh, he's going to trot it out for us to show us how it's supposed to be. Uh, Trump trying to decide what to do here. He's got Kill Command sitting around. He's got plenty of damage to throw wherever he wants it. Again, with the taunt out... Berserker is just a non-issue at the moment, so it looks like he's sending all 12 of it straight into Orange's face, down to 15. Yeah, he could get another 5 in if he wants to shine. set up for lethal, but he doesn't have to. He's probably going to have a beast by the next turn. Worst case scenario, you play your actual beast and get it done. Yeah. No. Arm Orange Smith. can play the patron. He can play the patron with Warsong Commander. 
Patron, you attack into Misha with the Acolyte, then you can finish her off with <laughs> the Frothing. I don't think he can actually afford it, unfortunately, for him. It's all, it feels yeah. almost suicidal to do so. It's a tight position to be in, and he's going to hover war song. I mean, what do you do otherwise? You just sit back and wait for death, I guess. But uh, it's 1-1. One, one. Again, no best of fives here, best of three with that one ban. So, going to whirlwind it out. See what he can do. Gonna grab another Grim Patron. And no money for that. He's waiting for rope again. Oh god. <laughs> he's, he's gonna be fine. I think he'll be fine yep. on this one at the very least. So he's gonna just stack up a lot of armor, at least as much as he possibly can. Uh, he's gonna be able to battle rage. Well, it, it's worth a little bit to sacrifice perhaps the two armor you would otherwise get from, you know, armoring up and, you know, just turn that into, uh, Card draw instead. If he finds the explosive. Nope, Freezing. doesn't find that. Freezing it is. Gonna send the armor smith back in, which will uh, you know, not not a bad way to end up. Grabs himself a couple of weapons and a gnomish inventor. And it's gonna be knife juggler for Trump, who's got ten on the board, but he's looking at nineteen to uh, finish the job. Knife juggler gonna be the drop. Trade in. See what he gets. Nothing. Murlocs, man, they're the worst beast finally coming out. There he goes. Does Orange have anything to handle this? He's got one I... card draw of the Gnomish. He's going to have to fetch for it. Nothing else he finds. And I don't even know a single card could save him. I'm thinking about it, and I really can't think of a single one. Nothing um, doing right now is 7 health a lot to chew through. Orange this... actually just got reverse sweeped by Trump due to a rope problem. Due to a rope. He had a Trump 2-0. On the ropes, you might say. Uh, <laughs> on the rope. That's, I mean, how depressed are you if you're orange? You're looking at this board. You know you don't really have a lot. He's going to try to draw out. Uh, yeah, it's it worse on command. <laughs> that's a very, you know what I think the proper play is? You smash yourself with that beast, and then you say, well played. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Throw a weapon on. Does he no, need yeah, it? Yeah, he's just not through. even gonna, not gonna, not gonna go uh, fall on the sword there. Just gonna do it the classy way. Orange. I mean, have you ever seen a sadder looking expression as the webcams go away? No. Oh, somebody send him a conciliatory fruit basket or something. Now that's got to feel oh. horrible. I mean, it's happened in the past to players. He's not the first to which this happened, but we can add him to the list of yeah. players that get roped and lose the game. And somebody, you know, a few people actually say that, uh, and have said that in the past, when this happened on live on stream, in a patron deck, because that's always where it happens, is the only reason Grim Patron is balanced is because the math is so hard to do <laughs> and because the animations take so long. <laughs> if you change those variables, um, you could do nerf coming real quick. Yeah, you know, right? That, that's basically it. They're going to just reduce the turn timer to 30 seconds. Everybody's playing Zoo and Face Hunter. Those orcs then, will yeah. betray you, though, man. That's what it, that's that's been the 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 lore. Yep. Orcs, will, orcs will turn their back on you. So uh -oh. that's going to be match for uh, for Trump here, two one over Orange. A uh, little unfortunate for Orange after, as we said, the first game. Uh, we're going to be back after a short break. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to Vulcan, the the guys behind the tournament, basically, and Squarespace, who are you know a de like a, a website building websites. If you want to build a website without knowing anything about coding, get a really sleek looking website, check them out, squarespace.com. You can go on the slash deck masters um, to check them out. Also, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> 